What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the left side of the map in the blue color playing as Ra. His name is Joe. His opponent today in the red color playing as Poseidon. His name is Poz Tier 1. Poseidon Tier 1. Now, I'm not 100% sure who this is, but I have a sneaky suspicion this is Antos. Maybe chat can correct me later, but we're just going to call this guy Poseidon for the rest of the game because you, you just don't know. You just don't know. Uh, this guy is currently uh, in the top 10 on the Vubli ladder. So very, very strong player. And he's going in with his Poseidon here today. And we will see how it all goes uh, in this game. So the map is Tundra. Joe going in with his Ra. We haven't seen Joe playing a lot of Ra recently. He uh, he he much prefers to go in with uh, with his with his Set and with his Isis in this current patch, just on the fact that Set uh, and Isis have got the access to Anubites, and he really loves his Anubites. Ra doesn't have those, and you have to play a little bit differently here. Uh, so we'll see exactly what Joe's going to be doing here. Uh, he does manage to pull that villager in and make sure he's not going to be running back to his base. Has picked up a relic here. He has got the blue crystal shard. This relic's an interesting one. If you know the technologies which you need to research in order to get value out of blue crystal shard, it can be really, really good. So, for example, blue crystal shard doesn't really do anything for you at uh, for wood for wood chopping uh, if you have no upgrades. If you have hand axe, it still doesn't do anything for you. But if you have bow saw plus blue crystal shard, I believe it gives you a really, really big boost. Uh, his, the gold mining, for example, as well, uh, I believe gives you a boost at pickaxe, but doesn't give you a boost at shaft mine. I could be wrong about that. Would have to check on the uh, on the actual file. There's a, there's a cheeky stats file out there that has all of that information in it, uh, which is very, very cool. Uh, and... Yes, Joe going to be getting up his granary now over on this location. Going to be trying to get himself as much hunt as he possibly can before his opponent can start pushing him off it. And we do see Mr. Poseidon moving out to his forward Auroch really early here. A very interesting decision considering he's still got some Auroch left here, though they are both very low on the food. What kind of this Auroch's got 160 food? And we do see double Auroch getting grabbed in by this Lua plus an Elk. That's a lot of food here. You're looking at 950. The Lua can only bring in 1,000 food. So sometimes it bugs out and doesn't pull something in at the end. Uh, sometimes it does. But I think this is maybe one of those times where Mr. Poseidon is only going to be getting himself 950 food under that lure, which is fine. It's good because they're Aurochs and they're just going to chill there and be uh, very efficient later in the game. So uh, strategically here, Tundra can be a difficult map for Poseidon to play on just on the fact that gold mines are very exposed and it's really hard to get them. This gold mine over here in the corner is really, really nice for Joe and he does know about it. Uh, so he's going to be able to get a wall off and, and secure this gold mine fairly easily, but no gold mines are close to his town center, which can be very, very frustrating for the Poseidon player. Can't really utilize those mercenary easily to defend uh, and all of the other stuff. We do see that this uh, blue crystal shard has been dropped into the temple now. Going to be speeding up his gather rate when he gets those technologies that make him do that. And we are seeing Da is the god of choice. Fairly quick advance here from Joe. Already two villages on wood getting that uh, those resources for the next age. And we do see the Toskapos, or sorry, I should say getting those resources for the town center and for those technologies and everything else. Like Shadoof and everything else. Uh, but the Toskapos does spot this hunt shenanigans going on over here. And Poseidon did not get out the early Theseus in this game. Oftentimes, this type of play gets punished. But on a map like Tundra, you just expect the, uh, the Egyptian player to sit in their base and eat the Auroch. You don't expect the Egyptian player to move out and grab this forward hunt. So really smart play from Joe actually in going for this and our Poseidon player not going to be scouting it and not going to be reacting in time to get a Theseus out to push off this hunt. So nice play from Joe thus far. Joe very, very close to a second town center. We'll see if he's going to be moving up to this top location. He is moving up to this top lo location to get this town center. It's got a beautiful amount of elk on this one here. Joe can very, very uh, potentially go for a crazy fast 
heroic age here. Though he does have two villagers on wood, so that does indicate to me that he wants to go Shadoof. But these villagers are going to finish up on the hunt, return back to the home base. He's going to have the goats. Uh, is he getting himself husbandry or a Shadoof? Uh, uh, must be getting pickaxe. Okay, he's getting himself pickaxe. A bit surprising to see the pickaxe. I would have thought maybe getting husbandry here and going for a super fast heroic age, not bothering with Shadoof or anything else and get the pickaxe a little bit later. Get Shadoof a little bit later. We do see the Katoska Pot's going to come in, maybe harass the Pharaoh and just slow this down just a little bit, but he's so low HP, 12 HP remaining there, so he's not going to be bothering. Uh, and there is no real way right now for our Poseidon player to be preventing that town center from going up, as we do see him now getting his own second town center. And Theseus... And Santa come in, hit that location, and Joe is already gone. And he does have access to an Oroch over here that he can shoot now. So we'll see him grab that potentially uh, in the near future. As now we see a stable coming down for our Poseidon player. And the town center is up. What is he scouting out? He is scouting out that this location is going to be attempting to get gathered from. As the Hippolyta are going to be a little bit frustrating to deal with. Hippolyta does a lot more damage to the Pharaoh than the Pharaoh does to the Hippolyta just based on the amount of HP. So the Pharaoh will be falling here. Joe does pull back into the town center just in time as the villagers have to pull back as well. A Poseidon player gets his second town center up and he's going to be... Uh, He's going to be going forward in this game. He's shooting down these elk over here, or caribou, I should say, and getting all of his military units out. No walls up just yet for our uh, Poseidon player, and Joe not opting to get any kind of... Bar oh, no barracks going up, just an armory, so it is going to be a fast heroic here from... Uh, from Joe, it looks like, and potentially no farming... Uh, will happen either. He's a little bit short on the wood as well. And we do see this Auroch is coming up, but it's a little bit awkward here. The villager getting targeted down. The Wadger getting some good damage onto that center, though, as Poseidon player has to retreat back. He'll be sending villagers forward to try and get this wall up yet again so that the Apollo can't come around and harass this. I'm surprised Joe didn't just pull this Auroch over here and maybe put the granary here, Auroch here, villagers on this location. We see the uh, Theseus still trying to get in here and harass this Wadget, but Joe controlling this nicely, getting up these walls beautifully. Uh, and he's going to be completely safe here as these villagers now moving over onto this hunt on this location. But because Joe has to get up all of these buildings, it's going to be slowing down. Or these walls, I should say. It's going to be slowing down his heroic age by just a little bit. And we do see this wooden wall here with 53 HP uh, going down. Uh, very, very fast as the Hippocon now going to be streaming in onto this location, though the Wadget still is in here to defend as our Poseidon player is getting very, very aggressive. His, his center Rest is checking out this gold mine, making sure that this one doesn't get grabbed. We've got villagers in the center of the map as well, checking out this gold mine, and these units already over here to check out this gold mine. It's going to be very tough for Joe come uh, heroic age time to actually secure anything. What I would love to see from our Poseidon player now is moving forward and getting some walls up just to harass oh, a little bit more, maybe some forward stay Stables up onto this on this gold mine forward stables onto this gold mine as well could be a very very smart idea as well so we'll see how it's all going to go as now our Poseidon player moving forward here going to be harassing this hunt yet again we see the farms now coming up for Joe as he is going through Hathor and I do love this from Joe I think this from Joe is the best way you can possibly play Ra if you can get to the heroic edge without farming and then farm you have so much economy to play with you can actually go for that chemo market in the back corner trade up to here you're going to have a ton of food economy to spend on trade and you're just going to live the dream uh, but but Joe right now he's going to have to throw up a Migdol stronghold somewhere uh, and it's looking like at this point he's going to be heading down to the bottom side of the map it's obvious that our Poseidon player is going to be expecting on the top side of the map and our centaur has actually left this location open here so maybe this is on purpose from our Poseidon player he wants to allow the Migdol stronghold and put a big pressure onto this but maybe not I'm not 100% sure why he's just allowing this considering he's got all these units out but Nice play from Joe to, or lucky play from Joe to be able to get that one up. And we do see a market now coming down for Joe. An interesting placement on the market. Like, like I said, I would have liked to see like this market in this corner here just to start the trade route. Um, but not happening just yet. We do see the units moving in onto this location. The Hibolta just about to fall here as, uh, as Poseidon is kind of not getting any value there. He was looking after maybe sniping a villager or two, but did not manage to do that. Now we see... The Hippocon 
Moving through here, we've got some more walls over here as Joe now has his rock out. Going to be flapping around, looking for some hunt to kill uh, our, our raw player, Joe. And just as raw in general, he hasn't scouted at all. Uh, so this rock is going to be searching around, trying to find something to kill here. One, one extra nerf that I wouldn't mind seeing to the rock is like a slight reduction in the line of sight. Just as a random side note here. Because uh, you can tell that like Ra doesn't have like good scouting and the rock gets a lot of that scouting fixed by going it. Uh, and I feel like if you lower the line of sight just a little bit, you give, you give your opponents just that little bit more time to kind of survive the early game. But right now the rock just flies right in, sees five villagers here, easily going to kill off at least two of these as it does fall down. There's one kill coming through. Uh, Poseidon always... Oh, Decided to change targets here for some reason. There's maybe oh, another. Uh, hello. This Pitsuklas is so buggy. I tell you what, so buggy. That, that's so lucky there from um, for our side player. But it's just going to be retreating back. We do see uh, this Kamori getting sniped down as he's trying to push through, trying to take down the gate, opening this up, seeing what he can do. And now the Kamori going to be swinging around here, looking to attack. The villagers, there could be a beautiful uh, locust to come down here. And we do see that locust down as well as the rain, but no villagers killed. The Kamori will be able to get a couple of villager kills here as the Hippocon pushing in onto this location can potentially take down the Migdol stronghold as more Kamori are coming out of this Migdol, but they are not getting built very fast at all. Joe's got no gold in the bank. He does have his market up, so he could be selling wood for gold at this point. As we do see that the rock has been taken down, the Patsuko is going to be retreating back. Maybe going to take down some villages over on this location. These cavalry over here are getting taken down. And now the Hippocon making their way over to take down this Migdal stronghold. We do see the villages now moving forward onto this gold mine as Joe seemingly going to be sacking this spot here. <coughs> we do see our barracks now coming down for Joe. Maybe going to be thinking about getting some spearmen out here. But our Poseidon player has got uh, a lot of value thus far in this game. But Joe's got so much food in the bank. He could easily start a trade route here. I'm just surprised he hasn't. One little wall here. One market here. Straight up to the top location. Maybe even a market up in the top corner here wouldn't be a bad idea either. But not going for it. We do see the barracks getting taken down here as uh, Joe going to be retreating. He's trying to retreat his villages. We do see the uh, Hippocon going to be trying to circle around the back. But as the spearmen coming out, this army is starting to look a little bit too much for, uh, for our Poseidon player. And there's Shifting Sands coming in. Going to be bringing all of these units over to the top side of the map. Throwing up a Migdol Stronghold and being completely fine here. Very, very smart play there from Joe. Escaping that there. Uh, I wouldn't mind like a potential ceasefire here just to prevent the Migdol Stronghold from getting up so that he can make his way over here. Uh, but not going for that one. Uh, do we see any sort of... Any sort of heroic age coming through. It's very, very close. Actually, we've got 16 villages on food, nearly 800 food, and the armory is coming down. So, our side player is going to hit the heroic age very soon. Going to be able to actually spam in onto this location. You can see that beside, uh, that he's got two villages on favor right now. So, there's a possibility that we're going to be seeing some Nemean lions here and a heroic age push, which is actually really, really strong. And we do see these spearmen going after Joe's Hippocon. Uh, sorry. I can't speak. Joe's Spearman going after our Poseidon player's Hippocon here. Uh, and they're just going to be retreating away for the time being. We see a third town center now coming up as well as Aphrodite. 25% on the way. No surprises there. Still only two villages on favor. So it's probably not going to be mass Nemean Lions. So the Nemean Lions are really, really strong here against Ra in the Heroic Age. But Ra players oftentimes can simply just go to the Mythic Age if they see that. And you're going to be in a really, really rough spot. We do see Joe's, uh, Joe's market here is... An interesting one, to say the very least. This gives him nothing, except for taking up his population space. Uh, so we'll see if he's going to fix that up anytime soon. I mean, he could be just sending it to the hometown center here and at least getting like five, six, six gold from each trip. We are seeing another raid onto this location here as Epsilon players trying to chase the Hippocon, uh, trying to chase with the Hippocon versus the Camelry is very, very tough. So we do see a villager kill and then the Camelry are going to be leaving this location. 6.6 .6 speed versus 5.5 speed is a lot. 
And then we see Medium Spearman coming through. Aphrodite does hit now for our Poseidon player as Double Siege works is coming down for Joe. Going to be moving around on this location. We see the Apollo to go on after the Patsukos. The Nemean Lion is in on here. Going to be trying to take down these uh, Camel utilizing his special ability. They're doing a lot of splash damage to all of those units. Apollo is still drunk after all these years and cannot hit that Patsukos to save her life but does manage to take it down eventually. The Camelry are starting to fall. Hippocon now pushing down in onto this location as the Spearmen are out. We do see some archery ranges now up for our Poseidon player to start dealing with those Spearmen as well as Prodromos coming through. But I think the Prodromos is not going to be so good because I don't think that Joe is going to be going through, uh, uh, going through for more Camelry anymore. Uh, as, I mean, he just basically just has six Kamori to, to harass his opponent with at this point while the Spearmen are all getting taken out here. Nice play from Poseidon here to keep chasing down Joe's Spearmen. And we'll see how it's all going to go as the Hippocon moving back in onto this location here. Fortress is coming up now as we do see a Siege Tower going to be rolling in to try and deny this one. Nice play here from Joe. Joe's sitting at 127 and 130 population. Poseidon is 145 of 145 population. We do see a market now coming up for our Poseidon player as well. Going to be looking to go through Artemis fairly shortly and it is looking like our Fortress will be getting up here. So the Siege Tower not going to be quiet enough but Joe's still piling it onto this location. Still getting some good raids off. This gold mine is going to be under under attack very shortly yet again as our Poseidon player is not throwing up like a single wall this game so these are uh, these cavalry are going to be getting so much value as the siege towers are getting pushed back the spearmen going to be trying to flood over here trying to take down these hippocon does manage to push them back as the siege tower going to try and get back onto this fortress but i mean even if you kill the fortress it's still a sad state of affairs we do see the mythic age through for joe here as he hits Osiris, going to be utilizing the Fortress to take this down. And we do see Ceasefire cast at this point as our Poseidon player is going to be mightily struggling to get to the next age. In fact, he is doing the bonkers. We've seen this from Matrius against, uh, uh, against Chemo's Ra on Oasis. And that resulted in, uh, in Matrius losing that game to Chemo. Our Poseidon player here is going to go in with that same tactic of stealing this town center. And we'll see if it's going to work for him. Joe's Mythic Age. Our Poseidon player's Heroic Age. 160 of 160 population, but he does have to deal with a Son of Osiris. That's the hard part here. This Son of Osiris, if it dies, Joe is not going to really be able to have the pushing power to push through a Heroic Age Greek right now. But if he doesn't die, it's going to be really, really tough for our Poseidon player here. Uh, so we'll see what's going to happen here. Our Poseidon player has to retreat back, keep that Son of Osiris out of the range of the fortress, because I'm sure uh, when Ceasefire is over, the fortress will simply just start attacking that Son of Osiris here. And we aren't seeing it, but I mean, it is what it is. There we go. And we will be seeing this Nemean Lion coming through. The Mummy going to be hitting some of those villages right now as the Siege Tower is taking down this location here. Beautifully, we see the Hippocon trying to come around onto the Son of Osiris here. We'll surround it. Try to. He's actually missed that one. And now we see Heavy Spearman coming through as the Toxody sitting in the back trying to micro through. Is pushing forward. Has hit the Son of Osiris, but a Siege Tower pops out there for Joe to pick that uh, Son of Osiris up. We're trying to see if the Toxodes can focus down the Son of Osiris. Nice micro from Joe thus far, but our Poseidon player is holding strong here as the Son of Osiris cannot continue to fight here. We see the Son of Osiris popping back out. The Hippocon immediately jumping on to it. The Toxode is going after this one. Joe not microing it at all. He's taking so much damage. Needs to jump into that Siege Tower, but instead he's just going to be retreating back. Does decide to turn around. Finally, starts stepping down those Toxodes, but we're now half HP on that Son of Osiris. Really, really nice play thus far by our Poseidon player as Joe has to pull back just a little bit, but the Heavy Spearmen are going to be the issue now for our, uh, for our Poseidon player because it's just so much damage coming in onto those Hippocon. There's no Hephaestus out just yet. Um, the Toxodes in the back are a good option, but the Son of Osiris will be able to kill them off very, very fast. We see the Militia popping out of that fortress. going to be a huge help at this point. Uh, Poseidon is now at 140 of 160 population. Joe's at 140 of 140 population as the Siege Tower is going to be pushing through here. Uh, and we see a lot of very, very nice defensive uh, posturing here from our Poseidon player. But Joe still pushing forward. We see the Hippocon going back after the Son of Osiris yet again. 164 HP. These Hippocon doing so much damage. The Toxodes moving in. The Son of Osiris does get taken down there. That is so 
big for our Poseidon player. And he's going to be able to hold this now beautifully. He's got heavy Hippocon. He's going after the Catapult. What an incredible play from our Poseidon player to deal with Joe's Son of Osiris. Joe is going to have to retreat back now and figure out how is he going to be able to make a decent push come through now. No Son of Osiris, no nothing else. We do see the market up in the top corner of the map. Does our Poseidon player see this or not? He does not know about this. He's just happily farming up here. The villagers on this gold mine just hanging out. And honestly, if there is one place that you could guess your opponent is, it's here. You're not expecting him to be up here. So we do see these villagers retreating up. And as we see that, our Poseidon player is going to be noticing that this gold mining operation is going up in the top side of the map. As now, our Poseidon player is going to be starting to make a move up here. He's got a lot of Toxodes over on the bottom side of the map, though. Not exactly what he wants. However, this... Forest line here is absolutely brutal now as Joe has set up walls, set up a catapult. This town center is going down. And while this is all going on, the trade route moving through this location, we do see some uh, side buildings coming up here for our Poseidon player, throwing down those stables, trying to get some harass up onto this location. The Toxodes now going to be making their way up here. But is it too little too late? We see a fortress on the way now. For, uh, for our Poseidon player, he's not close to the next age, hasn't started a trade route, about to lose his town center, going to drop down to 145 of 160 population, and Joe's going to start making his way over here to try and take this one. We do see the villagers going to attempt to repair this one here. He needs to maybe throw up his own fortress here and get some Petropolis out to try and siege that down, uh, but... The fortress is up now. The Toxodes are over here. Gonna be trying to deal with those chariot archers. Nice micro there from Joe, pulling that chariot archer back. At this stage of the game, microing normally doesn't happen, and Joe is on top of it. Very, very nice here. However, it's looking as if our Poseidon player is controlling this location now. The trade route gonna get shut down for the time being here, uh, and it's gonna be a tough one for Joe, for Joe to continue here. To be honest. But he does manage to take down the town center. We see a barracks coming up over here as these uh, as these catapult are uh, kind of just going to sit here for a little bit. They are four population apiece. So eight population sitting on that location does hurt Joe quite a bit. In fact, gives uh, gives Appleton player a big, big advantage here in the population on this location. Uh, so we'll see if he's going to be able to utilize that one or not. How are the economic upgrades looking? We do see fortified town centers coming through. We don't have irrigation just yet. We do have shaft mine, no irrigation. That's a big, big miss on the economy here for our Poseidon player. We've got irrigation, we've got shaft mine uh, for our our Ra player, but no, no hand axe, no hand axe. It's a bit surprising. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure if, if. Uh, What's it called? My brain's just left me. If Blue Crystal Shard... I'm not 100% sure if Blue Crystal Shard affects... Oh, it makes a difference at no upgrades. It might make a difference at no upgrades. And maybe that's why Joe hasn't grabbed himself any uh, any upgrades there. But as this fortress falls, we see the militia coming back out yet again. Going to help so much with pushing through this army. Joe is uh, now pushing over here. We do see a granary up on this location as the villagers pushing in more barracks down. The spearmen going to be starting to jab away as Joe is now going to be grabbing his third town center here. He's going to say, thank you very much for the farms. I'm going to take all of those farms and just live the dream here. Meanwhile, this fight still continuing up on this location as the cam as the trade route is still just flooding through here. If uh, if we had the resources, I would suggest just come up here and build a fortress right here. Just plonk this down. We do see some Hippocon targeting down the villagers up here. As these units are still flooding in onto this location. The Pass is going to be doing some very, very good damage against those uh, spearmen. But the chariot archers in the back, the, the meat and potatoes of this army just doing so good. So much damage here. We do end up seeing these villagers, uh, or the laborers, taking down the Greek villagers here as Joe trying to get this town center up. But the Hippocon now going to be marching over here, riding over here to try and prevent this one. Going after these villagers, they do they do have Skin of the Rhino, so they do stay alive for quite some time. As the Hippocon now fighting over here, as the Skin of the Rhino villagers are so strong at fighting off these heavy Hippocon, whereas normally... Three heavy Hippocon would be a very, very difficult task to deal with for villagers nonetheless. But now the, the villagers have to leave this town center for the time being. We do see that this wall has been deleted here. So there's a pot potential here for our Poseidon player to just sneak in and wall this off. Just make sure that uh, it's a little bit harder for Joe to set up any sort of raid on that one. But now the villagers of our Poseidon player getting targeted down. This gold mine not safe at all here. 
as he's got only 125 or 160 population. This is going to give Joe so much time here to recoup any losses that he's had. We are still seeing more units flooding in onto this location. More villages of Joe are falling. He's not paying attention to this one. Instead, going ham after these villages. We see more units flooding over here for our Poseidon player, getting some very, very good damage done. See the town center going after this uh, heavy spearman as these villages are just walking down to the bottom of the map. He's got gold mines over here. He's got gold mines over here. Gold mines over here. There's plenty of gold here on the map that uh, Joe doesn't have uh, a lock on. Uh, but honestly, the, the big thing right now is that this location is what's important. This location, not so much. Just sack the town center a little bit, maybe, and just put all of the effort into controlling this corner, controlling this corner, uh, and taking this game late game. But it's looking like our Poseidon player is just not going to be able to do anything here. He's out of resources. He's out of gold. He's out of wood. He's out of food. He's 100 population. Joe is 140 of 140 population. This town center is just about to get up here. And it is looking dire here for our Poseidon player who is just not able to keep up that high level of play for the entirety of the game. Losing this location was too brutal here. He's moving over here, going to try and continue to get this gold mine uh, going yet again. But as Joe gets his third town center up, he's going to have access to an extra 20 population, going to be filling that up with villages and trade route. Uh, and he's going to be able to secure this corner. We see the chariot up is still raiding our Poseidon player as he's moving over with a Hippocon or two and some Toxodes. Should be able to take down these Chariot Archers. Maybe here. I mean, maybe not. There's still a lot of units here. Uh, and we are seeing, yet again, more units flooding over onto this location here. We see some buildings getting taken down as the Siege Tower is starting to move in here. These Spearmen doing some very, very good damage here. Uh, and we'll see what's going to happen as Joe doing some very nice play thus far. Uh, we just see a random gold mine up here now for Joe getting built, but Poseidon plays already here, and he does decide to tap out in this game. It was a very, very nice try here, but I do think that there was something the matter with not getting irrigation, and the food situation too low meant that villager production uh, and and basically Hapaspis production was hurting, and he just wasn't able to secure this gold mine here. The, brut the, but the, the fact of the matter is... Joe's son of Osiris dying here in this situation should have meant that our Poseidon player had a very, very good shot at winning this game. Because he was four town centers, no son of Osiris, nothing to really worry about. Just had to make sure he secured gold mines and got Mythic Age. If he could get Mythic Age here, he has Earthquake. So he could sack this town center, Earthquake this, and take it for himself. Or go Hephaestus and just say, I'm taking this game late game. But instead, he decided to try and put his foot on the gas and try and finish the game. And it almost worked. He was in on this location doing tons of damage, but just couldn't do it fast enough. Joe got the army out, was able to take down this location, able to take down the town center. And that was the game. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.